Hi folks, thanks for tuning in. Today I'm going to share my EDC pack with you all. This is something I keep in my vehicle for emergency purposes. I don't use it for camping and I don't use it for fishing or bushcraft. It basically sits there like a fire extinguisher or a mini insurance policy just in case I ever do need it. And of course that's one of the major cons of this bag because it's an expensive little write-off. Now this bag is not what you all would call a bug out bag. It's not that animal. That's for a different review and a different day. This bag is designed to get me home. Maybe if traffic were completely stopped due to some sort of a major incident or I had broken down or for some unknown reason I have to leave my vehicle behind, spend the night on the side of the road underneath an overpass. That's the intended purpose of this bag. It's not foolproof. It will not address every situation but it does provide me with some options. So what I'll do is, I'm going to jump into it shortly. I'm going to talk about all the contents on the outside, then I'm going to start breaking it down and we're going to get inside the bag. This is going to be a multi-part series, so hang in there. And I'm not going to review the bag itself because it's been reviewed already, but I will tell you it's a Maxpedition Falcon 2 and I'll just give you some quick specs on the bag. The approximate dimensions the capacity, and I think this number is, uh, is going to be more important to you all, 1520 on the cubic inches, and it's 25 liters to bag. That's a conversion. 100 ounce bag, or 100 ounce bladder will take in the back, or 3 liters. And as you see this bag here configured today, it's 23.5 pounds, or 10.65 kilograms. And just the bag, without the contents, I was able to get this for $146. Having said that, let's get into the bag. Up front here, I have a mini roly-poly. This is the smallest one. It's pretty lightweight and I think it could come in handy as an additional pouch. So I put it in there. Underneath, I have a garment. And let me just lift it up for you. What we have here is a North Face fleece. This is a wind resistant one. And it could come in handy if it is very cold out and I need to leave my vehicle and strap this bag on my back and start walking so this is a must-have in my opinion in the front I have a keeper here Maxpedition keeper to hang some additional items over here I have a small D-ring or grim lock and this is for hanging lightweight items perhaps a shirt or a hat or something along those lines and right here I have a little light by E-Gear so it's called the E-Gear Guardian and it's on here for the uh, for the obvious reasons. If I'm walking in traffic, I want to be seen, and this will afford me some sort of safety. And this is good for about uh, 250 hours. This little light. Now we'll move over to this side, and I have a lot of stuff going on here. Let's talk about the knife first. I did put a quality knife on here. This is a premium knife. It's almost too nice to be on this bag in my opinion, but it's on there for now. This is uh, a Falkneven F1. Most of you have seen this knife. This has been reviewed to death. It's a quality knife. It is in a custom sheath. I do have the pouch for the uh, diamond and ceramic stone there. Fire steel on this side. You can wear this dangle style or you can wear you can remove this piece here and wear it on your belt just like a uh, scout carry this one here is the premium model it is the 3G laminated powder steel and let me see if I can give you a shot of that blade there if it'll focus so that's the knife that I have in there it is stainless but uh, this is a very high quality knife and um, I have no doubt that this knife will perform I'll set that over there. Let's talk a little bit about this pouch right here. Here I keep a lighter, just an old standby Zippo. And uh, what I will say on a con about these, they do dry out over time and you need to keep fuel in them. Probably uh, every three to six months I need to put fuel in this because it does dry out. Up top here I have, let me get this a little closer, I have this pouch here with a multi-tool and the one I chose for this bag is the charge 
This is a, a Leatherman Charge TTI, very nice multi-tool. I do have the bit extender right here, should I need to get into a tight spot. And in the back here, I have a sleeve with additional bits that will attach to this Leatherman. So that's the multi-tool that I have on the bag in this pouch. Over here, we're talking about hydration, and we're also talking about cooking. This is the Pathfinder bottle and canteen, and I have it in this skeletonized bottle holder by ITS. I believe it's put out by Zulu Nylon Gear. But uh, the way this works is you simply would pull that off, grab your bottle, and this is full, I keep it full, and uh, it will adjust to almost any canteen, even a 40 ounce military canteen, this is a 40, this will fit in here fine, it will even fit in this cup. But uh, this is what I went with over a standard bottle holder, because I thought this was just too big and bulky and it just consumed too much space. I didn't want the additional weight, so I went a little bit more minimalist on this, this, this portion of it. So that addresses this side of the bag, and then what we're going to do is, I'm going to show you that I do have some gloves on top, nothing fancy, they're just a pair of gloves. I got a Cabela's deer skin, and I wanted something to protect my hands with. And we'll throw those over there. Now over here is where things get a little more interesting. Actually, before we, we, we talk about this first aid medical pouch, let's go to the front of the bag or the shoulder straps. I do have a jet scream whistle on this retractor, and I figured if I was going to have a whistle on there, I was going to have a loud one on there. Now, I'm not going to blow this because it's pretty obnoxious, but it, but it is very effective. Now over here I have a dominator clip in case I wanted to attach something else to here and a lot of folks will actually run their hydration bladder through here through this area and they will use these uh, clips to attach it. And I have a flashlight also on the strap where I can get to it and the one I chose is a Rofus. It is a JR30 I believe. This is a transformer light. It's a very neat light. It takes a single, see if I can give you a shot of it, it takes a single AA battery, you have an activation switch on the back, and then here in the front, this is for your different modes. It has about five modes, but what's nice about this light is you can attach it to the outside of the pack to illuminate your path, and the way you would do that is you simply rotate this head and check that out. Now you have an angle light. And this is uh, this is a very, very nice light. And that rides right in here. So we do have lighting. I, I have more lighting in the pack, but this, this is going to be the primary light. Now, let's get back to the first aid. Over here we have a small pouch. And we have some shears. Some medic shears in here. Over on this side, we have an 1110 tourniquet pouch with a tourniquet. And I hope I never need this because if you're in here, you, you obviously have a bunch of different problems. I also have a micro stream right there. Let me see if I can pop that out a little bit further. That's a micro stream, a little flashlight for treating some wounds. And I do like this case over some of the other ones. This is another pouch that I have with another tourniquet. This is a combat applications tourniquet in here. But as you can see, the tourniquet is exposed so it can get soiled. And I'm, I'm not real crazy about that. So I, I thought this was a better option to protect it and to keep it clean. And then I also keep it in this bag here so it's nice and sanitary if I ever need to use it. Hopefully I'll never will. All right. Now let's talk about this first aid kit here that I have and it's actually just a pouch it's called a toll boy I got it from ITS tactical and I purchased it empty empty and then I, I, I threw my own items in there a la carte and there's a couple ways to open this you can grab this handle here yank it 
and you instantly have all your contents or there's a rip cord in the back here for the molly sticks and if I yank this the entire pouch will actually come off the Maxpedition Falcon 2 and this string will actually release these molly clips here and it releases them and when it does it just comes right off just like that by pulling it so this is a nifty little uh, molly attachment clip I haven't seen anything like this but this is uh, this is a new upgrade for me initially I was using ones like this which you all have seen these are standard uh, malice clips also Maxpedition puts out these clips here I believe they call them tack ties and they work fine but they're a little sloppy uh, things move around but this is this is the ones I ha I got from uh, ITS Tactical and this is I think going to be the uh, the new ones I use going forward it's just so easy to remove them anyway let me show you I'm not going to take it off the pack because it's a real pain to come off but I will open it and show you that it is packed with emergency supplies and as you can see there I have everything that I really need treat blisters, bleeding, gloves gauze, ace bandage for the ankle and on this side I have tools, on this side I have more tools, a syringe to clean a wound things get really bad I have an Israeli bandage up here hemostats some medication a bunch of other uh, items to treat wounds and uh, to clean wounds with disinfect them so it, it, it it's equipped enough it, it it's not a level two or or a premium level two I do have one of those and I'll review that at a different time but for a kit like this this is this is optimal and it does give me some options and some remedies should I need to treat myself and in here I just have a bunch of different tools treat wounds uh, splinter removal etc etc so let me close this up and then we are going to be transitioning and moving into the inside of the bag and as you can see this thing is just a little packed and it's a little difficult to close there we go anyway what I'll do is I'll break down this front compartment here and then perhaps we'll move into part two because there's really a lot of material to cover actually you know what let me spin this bag around and let's do the back here because I failed to mention something this is where the hydration bladder goes back here folks and I wanted to open it up and just show you what I have in there I have A drum liner and this is a contractor bag three mil and this could come in handy should I need to build a shelter or have a little cover over my head to keep the water off me so I'll put that over there I do have a military grade poncho in here ripstop nylon with a little light on here and these are not the 499 ones you see at the checkout counter this is a very nice one it has the grommets and in the middle here inside I have a very very lightweight hat it's it's almost like a feather I believe I got this one from County Com but uh, just in case I do have to sleep out I want something to cover my head and keep my ears warm so here's the poncho more cover I can combine that with the fleece and get some added protection and there's nothing else back here but this is where or this is what's designed to hold the hydration bladder I'm going to close that up. We are going to pause right here. And when we come back, we are going to jump into these compartments in here. Then we're going to jump into the middle compartment. Then we're going to jump into the back compartment.